Hello everyone. We are going to discuss an example of activity network and we'll try to solve it by critical path method and find out the total duration of the project. And also we'll find out the critical and non-critical activities and the critical paths. So here is the example. As you can see, there is quite a number of activities, total 13 activities. Now we will start with activity on arrow method. The first two activities are not dependent on any other activities that means A and B. So we can start them from the beginning from the first node itself. This is activity A and this is activity B. Then after they are completed, after A, two more activities can be started, C and D. So they are both dependent on activity A. So from activity A, that is the node that represents completion of activity A, we can start two activities, C and D. And from completion of activity B, we can start activity E. So this is activity E. After that activities F and G, they are both dependent on again activity C. So from this node, that is completion of activity C, we can start two more arrows or two more activities which are F and G. F and G. So F and G are now complete. Then Next, let's go for activity H, which is dependent on G, sorry, and on D. So, this is activity H. Then comes activity I, which is dependent on E. So, this is activity I. Now, activity J is dependent on F. So here we can draw activity J. Now comes this activity K which is dependent on G and H. So that means we'll need a separate node which represents completion of both G and H. In the figure C, this node represents completion of G and this node represents completion of H only individually. So we can use a separate node here which represents and we can join them, join this node with the other two nodes by two dummy activities and therefore this node represents completion of both G and H. So from this we can start this activity K which is dependent on G and H. After that is complete, now comes this activity L which is dependent on G, H and I these three activities. Now this activity, this uh, node, the extra node that we have drawn, it represents only completion of G and H and it does not show completion of I. So we will draw a separate node here and we will join them with I as well as G and H. So to this node, three arrows and three or three dummy activities, that is dotted arrows are coming and joining. So these dummy activities are coming from G, H and I or the nodes representing completion of G, H and I. So this extra node represents completion of G, H and I and from that we can start activity L. So this is activity L. Now finally we have the activity M which is dependent on J, K and L. So this is completion of J, this node represents completion of J, this is completion of K and this is L. So from this again we can draw these 
dummy activities and therefore this node represents completion of all these three activities j k and l and from this we can start our final activity which is m so this is how we can draw this activity network diagram now as i mentioned in my previous lecture that is we try to reduce the number of extra nodes and number of dummy activities so can we do that here let's see in this part this node represents g completion of g and h but instead we can simply draw an act dummy activity to from g to h so this node represents completion of g and h instead of drawing a separate node we have simply used this node as common to both g and h but is this node even necessary now it's not even necessary therefore we can directly join g to this particular node and from this node which is completion of g and h we have we can start activity k because k is dependent on g and h then the activity l is dependent on g h and i that means this activity l is dependent on g h and i now this node represents completion of g and h but i is represented by this node only so what we can do is either we can draw another node here but instead we can simply draw a dummy activity to i itself so now this node represents completion of i as well as completion of g and h and from this we can start activity l that is this activity now here we are simply removing all these dummy activities one by one and we are not even thinking much about it that's because if you look at activity uh, this l it is dependent on completion of g h and i so we are using this particular node to represent completion of i as well as g and h but if you look at this list of predecessor activities there is no activity which is dependent only on i that means we don't need this node separately for any other activity which is only dependent on i but if there was an activity which was only dependent on i then we would not be able to join it like this because in that case suppose that activity suppose x which will be dependent only on i we cannot draw it from this node because this node represents now completion of i as well as g and h so that will be wrong so in that case if this activity was there then we would not be able to use this node as a common node but we will have to use a separate node that means from this node we will be going for activity x but another separate node using dummy activities can be created to start activity l so this node will represent completion of i as well as g and h and this node only represents completion of i only so but in this example there are no such activity x and therefore we can simply remove all these dummy activities with ease and we only needed this one dummy activity and from this we can start activity l after that if we look at this part all these activities on this part there is a dummy activity and an extra node which can be directly removed that means we can directly join it here 
similarly this part also can be removed and we can directly join it here and this part also is unnecessary we can directly join it here j k n l so now you see the activity diagram has has become much more simple now what i mentioned about removing this node or using it as a common node one thing you can check is how many nodes are necessary minimum maximum you can simply go on and on adding more and more dummy activities but at least a certain number of nodes or arrows will always be required and that is that can be found out by looking at the different types of dependencies so in this case if you look at it how many different types of dependencies are there the first kind of dependency is basically independent that means these two activities are not dependent on any other node and any other activities so therefore they can be started from a single node which is the first node then these two activities are dependent on a single type of uh, single activity or single type of dependency that means completion of activity a so both c and d can be starting started from a single node this one then comes a different type of dependency b so this is another node similarly this is another type of dependency that means both f and g are dependent on c so f and g can be started from a single node which represents completion of c which is this node from which both f and g are starting then comes another one d from d we have activity h that means from this node then e which is this node then f which is this node and gh so gh is one particular type of dependency so if we have a node which represents completion of gh from that we can start this activity which is this node and then there is another different type of dependency which is ghi that means there is one or more activity which is dependent on g h and i now we have one node which is representing completion of g and h so that will not be useful here so we'll need a separate node that is this node which represents completion of g h using this dummy activity and completion of i so this is an extra node that we required and finally another node is jkl from which m can be started so jk and l are represented by a single node and from which we have used we have started the activity m so therefore we can say that the minimum node required is equal to the different types of dependencies how many types of dependencies did we find here the first type is the independency actually then dependency on a then dependency on b then on c d e and so on so these are different types of dependencies so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 so 10 different types of dependencies are there and after that we'll need the last node which is the completion of the project so we'll need 10 plus 1 nodes now let's see if that is true in the diagram we have one node 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 so we have a number of suppose dependencies plus one so this is the minimum number of nodes that will always be required 
you cannot go below this number of nodes but you can always go above this by using unnecessary dummy activities they may not be always unnecessary but in some cases they can be eliminated so now we have seen how we can draw this network in activity on arrow method and how we can keep on minimizing the number of nodes and number of dummy activities so if you compare both these the first trial and the final result it will look like this the first trial was having all these extra dummy activities but finally we arrived at only a very simple diagram now let's try to find out the total duration of this project this is the same activity network diagram only the locations are a little bit shifted the lengths of arrows are different so don't get confused it's the same activity diagram now in this case if we want to find out the total duration of the project obviously it is not going to be the sum of all these activities because some of the activities are can be carried out simultaneously so you don't have to add all of them so we can proceed now let's first write the names of activities this is activity a this is b and their durations are two days and four days then activity c and d are there c takes three days d take five days then activity e takes only one day then f and g they take three and six days respectively then h takes three days i takes four days then j takes one day only k is taking five days and L is taking three days and finally M is taking four days and this dummy activity its duration is zero and we don't even have to give any names or numbers here because just by drawing this dotted arrow we can know that it is a dummy activity now let's carry out the forward pass process so on each of these nodes we'll draw these two chambered boxes where we'll write down their earliest time of occurrence and latest time of occurrences respectively because we are writing these above nodes and not activities and nodes are representative of events only not activities event means beginning or ending of an activity so all these boxes can be drawn now let's carry out the forward pass in forward pass what is the time when this event occurs that is beginning of all the activities that is on day number zero then comes completion of activity two it can be completed at the earliest after two days then activity b can be completed at the earliest after four days then activity c can be completed after two plus its own duration three that is five days then activity d can be completed at two plus its duration five that is seven days then activity e will take only one day so but it can be started only after four days so therefore four plus one five days then comes activity f which will take five plus three that is eight days then after fg g will take 5 plus 5 plus 6 that is 11 days 
and wait here we'll have to do some check because we are not simply this box is not only for g this box is designated to this node not to any particular activity and this node represents completion of both g and h so we'll have to check when both of g and h can be completed so g will take 5 plus 6 that is 11 days and h will take that is this part d and h that will take 7 plus 3 that is 10 days so if we write 10 here that will be wrong because by 10 days activity g is yet to be completed only when both of them are completed both g and h then only we can use this node so this node will be arrived at or this node will happen on the 11th day when both g and h are completed although h has completed one day earlier only after completion of g we can say that both these activities are completed then comes this node which is after completion of i and also completion of g and h now again see in forward pass method as we have discussed in the previous lecture we'll have to check all the arrows meeting at a particular node so at this node two arrows are meeting one is from a dummy activity and one is from a real activity so this dummy activity will be starting at 11 day and its own duration is zero so we will we may write 11 here but we'll have to check this path as well where this activity i starts after five days and it takes four more days and it's completed on the ninth day so out of 9 and 11 11 is the maximum that means only after 11 days we can say that all these three activities that is i as well as g and h are completed because only after that we can start our activity L which is dependent on G, H and I. So we'll have to write not 9 but 11 here. Then we'll go to this node, node 10 and this again represents completion of three more activities j k and l so we'll check one by one j can be started after eight days and it takes one day so that will be nine days k can start after 11 days and it takes five more days so that will be 16 days and activity l can be again started after 11 days and it takes three days so that will be 11 plus 3 14 days so out of this we'll have to check take the maximum one and that is 16 days so after 16 days we can say that all these three activities are completed and after that for the final node there is only one arrow meeting at this one so we can simply add 16 plus 4 that is 20 days So that is our forward pass and in each node we have found out their earliest time of occurrence. Now let's go for the backward pass where we'll start from the last node. The last node is the node number 11 and here latest occurrence time must be the same as the earliest occurrence time because we are considering that the total duration is not affected by any kind of delays. So no matter what happens these two numbers are the same then comes this node and in backward pass remember we'll have to check arrows coming out of a node and not 
coming into a node coming into a node was for forward pass which we have already done in this node and this node and so on but in this case in the backward pass method we are going to look at arrows coming out of a node so for the first part it is simple in this node there is only one arrow coming out so therefore 20 minus 4 gives us 16 so there is no other option it has to be completed either earliest or latest by the 16th day then we'll go to suppose this node and this node can be given by 16 minus its own duration 3 and that will be 13 after that let's come to this node 16 minus 5 it will be 11 and into this node 16 minus 1 is 15 so all these nodes are completed now let's go back to go backwards even let's start uh, let's do this node number 6 here 13 minus 4 equals 9 then in this node 11 minus 3 gives us 8 and in this node yeah here we'll have to check two arrows because two arrows are coming out of this particular node and therefore We'll have to take the smallest of these two 15 minus 3 that gives us 12 but 11 minus 6 that gives us 5 so here we'll have to write 5 we forgot one thing here in this node although the answer is still correct in this node also there were two activities coming out of this Although one is dummy activity, still we'll have to consider them. And if we do consider them, then we'll, we'll find that along this path, if we take 16 minus 5, that gives us 11. Along this path, if we take 13 minus 0, which is the duration of this dummy activity, that gives us simply 13. But anyway, you would, we would have to only take the smallest, the minimum. So we are still correct. But we kind of forgot about this particular node so don't forget this now so we have completed this node now let's come to six five and four are done let's come to number three In number three we have nine that is this latest time minus duration will give us eight and so node number 3 is complete now let's go to no node number 2 here again there are two arrows one arrow will give us 5 minus 3 that is 2 and the other one gives us 8 minus 5 8 minus 5 that is 3 and out of 2 and 3 we'll have to take the minimum so it is 2 here We'll have to write the minimum of those two and after that if we consider last or the first node node number one then two arrows are coming out two minus two will give us zero and it has to be zero at the end and eight minus four will give us four anyway that will be greater than zero so we'll have to take zero only so now if we check all these paths so there are several paths one let's use a different ink one part is this another part is this another part is this 
then there is this path and then there is this path so out of all these paths we have to find out the critical path and as we have discussed in the previous lecture the critical path is where the earliest time and the latest time are the same that means where there is no room for delay or there is no float as we remember float is the duration by which an activity can be delayed and the path along which none of the activities can be delayed or otherwise the total duration will be affected which in this case is 20 days and we don't want to make it 21 or 22 days so in that case we will have to look at the path which is this node then this node then this node it will not be this node because here one day it can be delayed by one day then this node is not considered because again this can be delayed this node this node and this node so the activity part which is critical or the critical path is a c g k and m so the critical path is a c g k m so this is the critical path and the total duration of the project is d or t whatever you want to call it let's call it t that is 20 days now you can also find out the uh, float or drag along different parts obviously along the critical path there is no float but along the other paths on this path there is a float of two days but that's because the latest starting latest time is 13 and earliest time is 11 however if we go along this path because paths are again branching and merging together along this path the float is 4 days because 9 minus 4 5 is 4 or 8 minus 4 is also 4 and along this path it is only one day along this path obviously it is zero days and along this path it is 8 minus 15 or 15 minus 8 which is seven days so this particular activity can be delayed by seven days these two activities can be delayed by four days only this activity can be delayed by two days and this activity can be delayed by one day by activity i mean these activities d and h can be delayed by one day or b e and i can be delayed by four days and so on after you complete the drawing you can uh, just to show the critical path you can make them a double lined arrow like this a c g k m so that will directly show us what is the critical path so this is how we find out the total duration and also identify the critical activities and critical paths now if we try to do, uh, do the same in activity on nodes method then let's see how it will look like so we'll start with the start node which does not represent any activity but we'll start with the first two activities a and b and they are not dependent on any other activities so they can start at the big at the beginning itself then from a two more activities will come out c and d then from b 
only one activity comes out which is E then from activity C again two activities F and G will come out like this and then from D H will come out from I from E I will come out from F J will come from G and H K will come and from G H and I L will come and after J K L J K and L are completed M will start and after M is completed we can indicate the end of the project now I'll leave this part to you and only thing that you need to remember is this top left corner represents earliest start time this is earliest finish time this is latest start time and this is latest finish time and in this bottom middle cell you can write the float of different activities which will be simply latest start time minus earliest start time or latest finish time minus earliest finish time this it should give you the same result if it is not the same result then maybe you have made a mistake so that's one of the checks that you can do and these values are already written here these are their respective durations so uh, i request you to start uh, try this pro problem yourselves and find out the total duration it should be the same as what we have already solved in the other method thank you